barely released in 1983, featuring this terrible ad campaign, Get Crazy was directed by Alan Arkish. He began his career cutting trailers for Roger Corman's New World Pictures alongside fellow filmmaker Joe Dante. This is them in 1976's Cannonball. Together, they created trailers for films like Caged Heat, Crazy Mama, and Death Race 2000. They went on to co-direct the film Hollywood Boulevard. Joe Dante then went on to direct Piranha, and Arkish went on to direct Rock and Roll High School. If you haven't seen that, what are you doing here? Get Crazy is about the Saturn Theater, and the backstage insanity inherent with putting on a New Year's Eve show. It stars Daniel Stern as Neil, the Saturn's put-upon stage manager, Gail Edwards as Willie, the Saturn's former stage manager, and Alan Garfield, or maybe it's Gorwitz, I don't think even he can decide, as Max Wolf, the Saturn's owner. The New Year's Eve concert is the biggest show of the year, and this year is no exception. Each of the feature artists has a real-world counterpart. There's King Blues, played by Bill Henderson, who's a stand-in for Muddy Waters, Captain Cloud and the Rainbow Telegraph, a Grateful Dead proxy, though Howard Kalin can pretty much be standing in for himself. This is New Wave Luminary Nada, played by Lori Eastside, herself no stranger to the New Wave scene as a member of Kid Creole and the Coconuts. Special guest star Piggy, played by Lee Ving, lead singer of the band Fear, although he'll always be Mr. Body to me. Here's Malcolm McDowell as Reggie Wanker, a Mick Jagger clone, and Lou Reed as Auden, a reclusive genius who invented the 70s and bears more than a passing resemblance to Bob Dylan. Hoping to put an end to all the good times are the film's antagonists, well, the bad guys. Ed Begley Jr. plays Colin Beverly, a former Saturn employee who's become a real estate tycoon. Those are teen heartthrobs Fabian and Bobby Sherman as his flunkies. With the help of Max's greedy, sycophantic nephew Sammy, played by Miles Chapin, he's looking to not only stop tonight's show, but to put an end to the Saturn completely. Rounding out this, quite frankly, enormous cast are John Densmore, former drummer for The Doors, as Toad, Reggie Wanker's drummer, Franklin Ajay as Cool, you might have seen him recently in Bridesmaids as Maya Rudolph's father, the always adorable Stacey Nelkin as Neil's little sister Susie, and as her parents, Dick Miller and Jackie Joseph. In just a few years, they would effectively reprise these roles as the Futtermans in Gremlins. And on a side note, because I love voiceover artists so much, Jackie Joseph also provided the voice for Melody in Josie and the Pussycats. Please, don't talk so loudly. I can't hear my phone call. 1983 turned out to be a banner year for fans of movies starring Daniel Stern and Malcolm McDowell. Catch you later. <laughs> in addition to Get Crazy, there was Blue Thunder. Catch you later. Catch you later. Speaking of Blue Thunder, does anyone else remember the short-lived television series starring Dana Carvey of all people? Who the hell would put that on the air? I need to take a moment to talk about the drug use in the film, which is rampant. Look at this. They have a guy who is a joint. Now, as you all know, drug use is bad. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. Drug use is awesome. Look, they've got a guy who's a joint in this movie. Not only that, but Get Crazy has the single greatest drug dealing character of all time. This is Electric Larry. The film's tone swings from cartoonish to crude. This is Reggie Wanker having a lively conversation with his penis. Is that you, Oco? I didn't know you could talk. There's a lot you don't know about me. To juvenile. In other words, rock and roll. And like good rock and roll, Get Crazy is wildly entertaining. It is, at times, ridiculous and sublime. For instance, every band in the film manages to cover the exact same song, Hoochie Coochie Man. You know I'm a Hoochie Coochie Man! Or the fact that Auden, who hasn't performed on stage in over six years, spends the entire movie trying to get to the Saturn. He never makes it. Spoiler alert. In the pantheon of rock and roll movies, it may not be as critically lauded as something like Almost Famous, but they can sing Tiny Dancer all the live long day. Get Crazy will still have a better soundtrack. Nor is it as well known as Arcus's own rock and roll high school, though to me it's an improvement in almost every way and it'll never be as groundbreaking as something like A Hard Day's Night. But it shares that film's anarchic spirit, and at least matches it in cinematic ingenuity. So why haven't you seen Get Crazy? Two reasons, greed and stupidity. In a move worthy of Colin Beverly, I'd like to talk about the most beautiful thing in the world. Money. Money, 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 money. I love it. The film's producers hatched a scheme to make money by the film's failure at the box office, which goes a long way to explain the advertising campaign I mentioned earlier. And this 
dreadful trailer. Get it while it's hot, get it if you're not. Come and get it, get crazy. What Animal House did to college, an airplane did to flying, get crazy does to rock and roll. Though deplorable, Greed is at least an understandable reason why the film failed to find an audience initially. But what's keeping you from picking it up on DVD or Blu-ray? Well, that's where the stupidity comes in. Over the years, as the film's elements were shuffled from one studio to another, the soundtrack was lost, thus ensuring it will never be released in any format ever, which is a goddamn crime. You may be able to find an old VHS copy of it, sometimes it plays on a movie channel or two, or you may be able to catch a screening of it at a local revival house. If you encounter any of these three options, see this movie immediately. Music fans love to engage in a hypothetical game of which concert they would attend in all of history if they could. Some would choose to see the Beatles at the Cavern back in 1962. Others might choose the time Dylan went electric at the Newport Folk Festival in 65. Or maybe the Sex Pistols at the Lesser Free Trade Hall back in 76. But for me, there's only one answer. The Saturn Theater, New Year's Eve, 1982. If you want to watch some of my other videos, you can click the links below. There's Abominable Dr. Fives, Animal Olympics, and Into the Night. And if you're feeling like a generous human being, you can subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.